Well, the words I'm going to deliver that, uh, that describe a body of people that lived in a particularly decadent time. <clears throat> Malachi prophesied in the general vicinity of Zechariah. The things were pretty, had fallen on hard times. He had what a message for the people he had. I want to just describe some of the words of the, that show how God assessed that generation. The first is Malachi 1 7. Ye offer polluted bread upon my altar. That's a generation. Malachi 1 12. You have polluted it. In that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness is it! Get tired of all this religion, always doing things that God asks us to do. Describe a generation here. Mm -hmm. Here in Malachi 2, 8, You have departed out of the way, and have caused many to stumble. That's a generation we're talking about here now. Deuteronomy 2.17 You have wearied the Lord with your words. That's religious words we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Here's another word with Malachi 3.9 You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Now that's the environment we're talking about. How can a people be found in an environment like that? Well, there were some found that weren't, Amen. didn't fit in those categories. It doesn't tell us how many it was, it tells us who it was. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the people of God, we're not talking about how many they are. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We're talking about who they are. Yeah, right. Oh, there's more than, than appears because they're scattered. So they, they, mm -hmm. wait till you see when the Lord gathers them all together. Yeah. We're talking a lot of people. It would not surprise me if more people were in heaven than were in hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Right. Well, a third of the human race died in infancy, so they got a pretty good jump on things yeah. right there. Yeah. That's not to mention great periods of awakening when a whole multitude can be swept in in a mm -hmm. short time. Yeah. So here's a cluster of people now God's going to comment on. He's commented on the others, so he, of course, it isn't that he like gives equal time. He's going to show that his people are not put down by circumstances like I read. Mm -hmm. It was Amen. religion in, a, in, a, in its uh, general scope had deteriorated. The priests were profane. The people were profane. The people were sick and tired of serving God. They didn't honor his altar. They robbed him of his tithes. It was just wearisome. Their religion was wearisome to them. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have some fun, excitement, and <coughs> so forth. Now in the middle of this, here's what uh, verse 16 and 17 of the third chapter say. Then, <coughs> this is what I read about, then they that feared the Lord spake often <coughs> one to another. And the Lord hearkened. Mm -hmm. He listened in. And heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. To so those who fear the Lord speak often one to another, they're described here as thinking upon his name. Amen. How's that? You do talk about what you think about, and that is true. Amen. Uh -huh. Well, Lord, what are you going to do about these people? This uh, remnant, this holy remnant, who when all this other was going on, they, they continued fearing the Lord. They were afraid to do the things those people were doing. I will tell you that sin, people stop sinning when they're afraid to sin, when they're afraid Amen. to sin. Yeah. Yeah. And not until. Yeah. That's the way it works. Amen. These people feared God, which means they... They considered the reprisals of God against sin to be a lot worse than the enjoyment of sin with the pleasures of sin for season. Mm -hmm. So he said, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write them in a book. Now that's a commentary language for the frailty of humanity. 
what he means is make I'm going to make provisions so I will not forget these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad they are, no matter how I judge the people, I'll remember them like I remember Noah. After the flood waters were on the earth for about a fourth of a year, kept on rising, rising to 18 cubits above the highest mountain. Then finally they begin to subside. Land begin to show. Genesis 8 1 says, He remembered Noah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of remembrance they're talking about here. That after the wrath has swept through the land, which it was, which it would do, he, re he said, I'll remember him. Make sure that I remember these people. So God makes provision mm -hmm. to remember those who remember him. Amen. Amen. Now here's what he says They'll be mine. Now, who's going to take you from God? Who's going to take a person from God? Huh? Who's going to outduel God for somebody? They'll be mine. That's what they'll be. Mine, saith the Lord. Uh, when will they be yours, Lord? Well, in the day when I make up my jewels. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right now, they're like separate jewels in a jewelry box. Uh -huh. But I'm going to make a diadem out of these. Mm. I'm going to set these in a beautiful crown that will display my glory. Mm -hmm. Then they'll be mine. They'll be part of, when I present my finished work, <laughs> they're going to be in there. Yeah. They'll be mine when I make up my jewels. And I'll spare them as a man spareth his own son that serves him. Now, there's a different kind of sons, you know. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a murmuring son like the elder brother. There's uh, sons that mock the other son, like Ishmael. There's sons that plot against the favored son, like Joseph's brothers. Yes, I see, there's other kinds of sons, but a son that serves him. Oh, God's not going to get rid of the servants. Not the servants. Not the one he's brought into the work. He's not going to rid himself of them. Uh-huh. And if it looks like he has gotten rid of them, it's just because their work was done. That's all. Amen. If Paul's removed from the scene, it's just because he finished his course and kept the faith. Amen. That's, that's all the reason, see. If Stephen's stoned, it's just because his work is done. I'll spare them. In other words, they're going to finish what I've yeah. given them to do is the idea. He doesn't mean that you will, you'll just live on, live on, live on mm -hmm. in the flesh. I'll spare them as a man... Spareth his own son, then shall ye return and discern. You know, when I make up my jewels and I gather these people, everybody's going to know who my people are. Amen. Mm -hmm. The ones who plotted against him, the ones who tried to tempt him, they're going to know. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. That's going to happen when Jesus comes again. The most wicked people on earth are going to know who served God, yes, amen. who didn't. Amen. Yeah. In Revelation 3, 9, he says, I'll make them come and bow down at your feet and worship you mm -hmm. and confess that I loved you. Mm -hmm. So see, you can't really afford to get all agitated and hateful because someone doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not over yet. Yeah, yeah. right. Amen. You've got to, you've got to let God be your vindicator now, not you. Not you. See, this is a great relief. 